Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and it's time for a race car update. Let's get into it. Now let's talk about wheels first and you'll be glad to know that these are not the wheels we're going to use. These are mock-ups. Um, and what we're actually doing is we're trying to figure out whether or not the wheel size that we want to use will even fit in there and if it does, what the offset, offset needs to be. Um, so let's cover a few basic points here. So, uh, a Tesla Model S Plaid has 10.5 inch wide wheels on the rear and 9.5 inch on the front. Now this vehicle weighs half the weight of that car, but we still want to get that traction down. So I'm aiming a 10 inch wide, I think it is, 10 inch wide wheel on the, on, on the rear. And what we want to make sure is that it doesn't interfere with the strut inside there. And also it doesn't protrude too much from the outside of the wing here. And conclusion is, it fits. But um, anybody that's actually um, picked up on some of the writing on here has seen that there's an eight, 11 inch rim. Now, what does that mean? Okay, if you go with a 10 inch rim, that means that the tyre size is going to be 10 inches but the actual overall wheel um, diameter, uh, uh, or width if you like, sorry, is gonna be an inch more. You can see it on here. So this is an eight inch uh, wheel, and the overall wheel uh, width is at nine inches. So when we make these mock-ups, we've gotta make this bit here 11 inches to accommodate a 10 inch wheel. Sounds weird, but hopefully you get what I'm talking about. Um, as far as diameter is concerned, we're going with an 18 inch rim because there's lots of uh, tire sizes we can uh, go with an 18 inch uh, rim. So we're going 18 inch by 10 on the back. And as you can see, it fits. The other thing you need to also bear in mind is um, you need to ensure that the um, inside of the wheel clears the caliper as well. Um, so I mentioned offset before. You're probably wondering what offset is or some people are. Now offset is essentially um, the offset from the midpoint of the wheel. So if you're actually looking at the, the point where the actual wheel um, uh, attaches to the hub, um, that's very rarely right slap bang in the middle of the wheel. Usually it's offset a little bit um, either way. So we're also trying to figure out what the offset of the wheel needs to be here, which is why this surface here is only, where are we? Three and a half inches in from the outside of the rim. So we can calculate what the offset needs to be. So the rear is pretty much there. 10 inch uh, rim, 18 inch diameter, and I'm not quite sure what the offset is. Um, we've probably written it down somewhere, but we've got a problem on the front. So let's have a look at the fronts. Right, we're around at the front now, and one thing you have to do when you're actually working out your, your wheel sizes, if you like, is you need to make sure the suspension and everything is sitting at the right height. So essentially, this is now as if it was on the floor with all the full weight of everything in there. And bear in mind, this is the wheel. The tyre would be kind of up here. So the problem we have is, number one, we're going to have to trim some fibreglass off. This is not a problem, it's just fibreglass. But the main problem is I wanted to go nine inch on the front because don't forget, we've got a small Tesla drive unit in the front as well, driving these wheels. So we want to get the traction down here, but with nine inch in, uh, wheels, in fact, what we've done here is we put eight inch wheels in and there's a massive overhang here outside of the uh, wing, but also we're quite close to the strut inside. So I've kind of paused this at the moment because I'm going to order some springs to see how much real term gap we're going to get between the um, uh, springs and the wheel, but it's the tyre that's probably going to push it out a little bit further. Um, so I'm going to pause it for now until I've got the springs in, but I just wanted to show you some of the challenges we've got on the front. So clearance there, um, clearance on the inside, but equally the calipers. The calipers stick out quite some way. So you can see here the offset is quite large. So um, I'm a little bit worried about that as well. So we're juggling about three different parameters here at the uh, same time to try and make sure that we get the optimum size wheel um, to be able to get the traction down that we need. Because the other thing we also got to consider as well is um, steering lock. So these wheels are quite uh, a bit wider, if you like, than the original wheels that were, was on this car. So um, I think what we're going to end up doing is cutting and shutting the actual fiberglass wing to kind of bring the surface 
out a little bit further to so it, it encapsulates the wheel and tyre. But um, yeah, more on that in future episodes, I think. So rears are done, fronts are problematic. Right, next on to the wiring. Now, wiring. I've been uh, a little bit busy in the evenings and weekends, starting to do all the low voltage wiring in the car now. It's looking like a, a multicoloured plate of spaghetti at the moment, but that's how it always starts. It's like a rough route for the cables, and then once everything is confirmed to be working and all is good, what we'll do then is we'll start wrapping all this up so it'll actually look a lot, lot, lot tidier. Um, these wires uh, here are going to be for instrumentation in the dashboard. So you've got uh, uh, one of the displays here, can communication going to the dials. Uh, we've got some switches on the dashboard as well. So you've got reverse, neutral, forward, parking brake, um, 12 volt fuses here. But this thing here in the foreground, you're probably wondering, what's that? Now, um, brakes were going to be uh, obviously something we're going to have to tackle as far as um, actuating them is concerned because obviously you've got massive calipers. Um, there's two ways to go. You can either go with a vacuum um, boosted uh, master cylinder or, like we've done here, an electrically boosted master cylinder. So this is an eye booster off a of Tesla and we made our own header tank because usually the plastic header tank goes way out into the distance. So we made a, our own little header tank there for the brake fluid. So we've got a custom made brake pedal assembly with the eye booster in. All the 12 volts is kind of run into the car now. So we've got um, EPB um, uh, ECU there. We've got the actual Tesla uh, ECU there, the EV controls uh, T2C over there. And uh, it's time to uh, see if my wiring works. So um, you're going to be experiencing it the first time as well as me. So it's time to connect the battery and um, see what happens. Fingers crossed, everybody. Now, before I switch on the car, um, and then we'll just test things like the parking brake and motor controller works and stuff like that, I just want to show you um, some, well top tips if you like of uh, when you're wiring up a car like this i mean even a simple car like this which you know doesn't have any lights windscreen washers things like this although it probably will have windscreen washers but it's uh, a lot of complex wires in here i don't know how many wires are there I'd probably say there's about 30 different wires going from front to back there so when we're trying to figure out the cable route um we use these little things these are stick on uh, little cable ties um, or cable tie mounts and you stick them in various different places because if that's not the right route you can take them off and move them but you stick them on as a temporary sort of like cable uh, routing solution cable tie them all up and once you're happy with everything and then you wrap basically if I grab that there you get this which is cloth tape you then wrap all your wires together like that so it looks like nice and tidy and then once you're happy with, uh, with all the routing, what we then do is we take a little nut like that. So this is um, an M8 nut and you weld it onto the location where you actually want to um, cable manage the, um, uh, the, the loom. So you weld it on and then you get one of these little fir trees and you push that in like so. And then you've got a permanent fix for all your uh, cables. So that's how we do it. You start off with a little temporary stick on one. And then we weld on one of these and we end up with a permanent fix by the end of it. Right, enough of that. Time to uh, turn on the car. So I've belled all the wires out. And when I say belled it out, that means that you check to make sure the wire you think is going from A to B is actually the right wire. So I've belled it all out. So in theory, this should work in theory but there's only one way to find out so we've got the 12 volt battery down here tiny little lithium 12 volt battery from anti-gravity awesome batteries by the way if anybody's got a race car and want a really really lightweight solution for a 12 volt battery anti-gravity is your best bet um so you've got your isolator 12 volt isolator that's going on now okay good <laughs> nothing went bang or fizz right so now i can turn the ignition on uh, which is this little switch here. And again, I'm going to go quiet as I listen out for bangs and fizzes. All is good. I heard a couple of little clicks. There are things like the um, ECUs coming on. So all is good. I'm just going to quickly check the 12 volt fuses are all still good. All good. 
Right, so first thing I'm going to check is the EPB, which is the electric parking brake system. So that's just working off the 12 volt ignition. So if I twist this now, we should hear the motors on the rear calipers tighten up. Ready, go. Oh, that worked. Happy days. I've got a light on the dash, which means it's confirmed the clamping force is up to where it needs to be. I'm just going to go and make sure the wheels don't spin. Yep. Success. Right, so that works. So off. So parking brake works. Now I'm going to switch it off because I want to go and get the app now to see if the motor controller works. Right, now what I want to do is get into the guts of the motor controller. So we're going to turn it on again this time and I'm going to use the app here to see if the motor controller is coming on. And secondly, which is why we're at the back, is see if the contactors are going to close. And the contactors are just essentially uh, big switches and essentially they're just going to close and um, we've got the pre-charge uh, contactor here and the negative that should close. It's not going to close at positive because there's no high voltage in here so it's going to think hang on a minute I'm not happy about this so it'll open them again. So what you should hear is a clunk then a click and hopefully what I see in here is um, it communicating to the T2C controller. So glamorous assistant time. Tim do us a favour can you put the ignition on? Yep, that worked. So the app woke up, it's communicating to the uh, controller, so that's happy. See it's 12 volts uh, there. I heard two contactors close um, and then open, so uh, it looks like everything's working fine. So, all right, and the next step is uh, hook up some 400 volts and see if the motors spin for the first time. Actually, not the first time, because we did a test run with this all out of the car, but now this is using a wiring loom in the car. So uh, yeah, let's go and get some 400 volts of death and see what happens. It's moment of truth time. I put in the seat, I've done all my uh, pre-flight checks. Um, I've, what I've done, I've, I've hooked up an external uh, battery pack to the rear battery pack um, and contactors. So there's no batteries in these boxes, it's just essentially a power supply coming in. Um, and I've checked for things like ground uh, uh, leakage to the chassis and stuff like that. So we're all good and safe. But what I don't know yet is if it's going to work. So I'm about to find out. Uh, right. So I'm going to watch the app because um, I need to see um, if that's working. I'm going to try my buttons. I'm going to try the brake pedal. I'm going to just try things before I actually make the wheels spin. So um, here we go. Right. So ignition on. So that was a contactors clicking, and that's not a good sign. So the high voltage bus is five volts. Oh, hang on, I know what I've done, hang on. We'll do a take two there, and I'll just switch on the isolator. At least we know the isolator works now. So, high voltage isolator on. Let's try that again. So ignition on, so we can listen out for the contactors closing. So pre-charge, then the main contactors. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got 340 volts on the high voltage bus. Um, we're in neutral. 13 degrees Celsius on the temperature of the motor. So first thing I'm going to check is brake pedal or brake switch works. So, yep, yeah, there we go. That works. So we have a brake pedal working because you need to actually put your foot on the brake to be able to change uh, direction. So the... Uh, so if I grab something here now, oh. so if I put it in forward, so there we go, and that's changed to D, D for drive. Now it should spin. You ready for this, Tim? Yeah, go on then. All right, and you've got the paramedics on uh, standby. Okay, so throttle pedal. I'm only going to really softly do the throttle. Oh. Wow. We are. We have uh, motion. We've got spinach. That's right. Front and rear. Yeah, that's right. 
You'd be yeah. going forwards now with that one. That was forward, yep. Yeah. So that also confirms that my lights and everything are all wired up right on the actual switches. So if I just put that neutral, so that's neutral. Try and reverse. And I can see it on the screen changing to reverse as well. I'll try that again now. So throttle on. And they're going backwards. Yeah, both of them. Both of them, yeah. Happy days. Four-wheel drive. Happy days. Look at that. My wiring works. Let's just put it in neutral before I forget. So neutral and off. I'm happy with that. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Here we go. So we have uh, wiring loom working. I'll switch the main isolator off. Here we go. All safe again. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> Right, so all that's left to do now, I suppose, is the high voltage side of things. But before we start on that, I'm going to finish this episode off because there's one thing I've forgotten to show you today, and that's the cooling. So let's show you that next. Right, now we've got the motors spinning. We've got to get the uh, radiators in as well because this is actually going to be quite a critical thing because um, you know a Tesla Model S, which is the motors that we're using here, is quite you know known for overheating after a couple of laps. So okay, this car is going to be about half the weight of a Tesla Model S, but we still need to cool the motor and the batteries down. Um, especially the rear motor, which is a big, massive induction motor and tends to suffer from heat soak. So we're starting to get um, uh, the location of the radiators. The size of the radiators, not quite sure yet, but you know we're going to go with ones that we've already got on the shelf, if you like. So this is the front radiator, just um, with a bit of uh, gaffer tape, trying to sort out where we're going to mount it. Um, uh, for the um, there's a slot in the front of the. Um, uh, uh, vehicles so essentially there's going to be the airflow coming in there so this is going to be the battery radiator and around at the back is the big one which is for the motor so let's have a look at that now here's the big radiator and this is going to be cooling down the motors the front motor and the rear motor um, whether or not it's going to be big enough don't know uh, we're going to go with this as plan a and we're going to um, probably plan for maybe b plan c maybe up to about g just in case but we'll start with this setup and see how we go. Um, airflow for this is going to be coming off that top roof vent. And we're going to duct it down to this area here. And then just in front of me here um, is the header tanks. We've got one, obviously, for the motors and one for the batteries. You want to keep the coolant separate for those because, obviously, the motors run at a higher temperature to the, what the batteries are, are comfortable uh, at. So, so there we go. You're right up to speed now. So um, oh, I'm happy with that. The motors spin. Um, we've got the coolant uh, to do, um, so I've got to sort out the uh, wheels and order those. I'm not telling you what wheels we're ordering yet, but I have chosen them. Um, so there you go, up to date. Hope you enjoy this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.